Okay, uh, it's a pleasure to have uh, uh, Dazo uh, Tokadze uh, among us from the University of Ilia in, uh, in Georgia. Um, he's visiting for three weeks uh, as an invited professor. Um, and uh, we'll give we'll, we'll, we'll now a talk, a research talk about uh, uh, formal theories of belief in the context of sensitivity. For mm -hmm. yes. Thank you, Peter. Uh, well, yeah, I'm going to be talking about um, uh, uh, formal theories of uh, belief credence uh, interaction and the problems that this, uh, at least some subset of the theories, uh, give rise to. Uh, so, uh, to introduce this topic, um, uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll just briefly explain uh, what the theories are theories of, uh, uh, and what, uh, what problems the theories are uh, designed to solve, and what other sort of problems they do raise. Uh, so, um, uh, when we think about doxastic attitudes of uh, human thinkers, uh, it seems to come in two general types. Uh, we can think about uh, uh, belief uh, as a fundamental, uh, uh, one of the fundamental epistemic uh, doxastic attitudes, right? uh, as a categorical attitude towards a proposition. Uh, so belief is a uh, binary attitude towards a proposition. You can either believe proposition or not, for instance, you use a belief that it will rain tomorrow, or you, or you don't have this belief. So it's a categorical binary attitude towards the proposition. Um, but human thinkers also have uh, various levels of confidences towards propositions. Um, and uh, I'm going to assume that confidences uh, have numerical structure, or at least can be represented as uh, numerical attitudes. So when we're going to be talking about confidences, I would have in mind uh, uh, degrees of belief uh, or Bayesian credences uh, towards the proposition. And uh, we can have both beliefs and this uh, numerical attitude towards the same propositions, for example. I can both believe that it will rain tomorrow and have, say, 80% confidence in that proposition. Uh, now. Uh, Plausibly, there should be some kind of connection between these two, between uh, our confidences in the proposition and our categorical attitudes. Uh, for instance, it seems uh, highly unreasonable to have a, a high confidence in a proposition, uh, but outright disbelieve it. For instance, if I uh, have a high confidence that it will rain tomorrow, it seems inappropriate for me to invest very low degree of confidence in that proposition. So this kind of uh, uh, possible thoughts motivate this, uh, uh, motivate this possible uh, research program to find general, precise, coherency conditions uh, which uh, beliefs and credence it should satisfy. So this should be a mutual uh, constraint on be belief and credences or confidences. Um, and uh, we want to find some kind of bridges, maybe, between beliefs and credences, uh, such that rational agents, uh, rational agents should, uh, should have beliefs and credences that satisfy these normative constraints. Okay, and so uh, it is, uh, this, uh, this uh, program can be, or uh, this thought can be motivated by rather uh, uh, ordinary uh, thinking about our psychology, right? We both have confidences and beliefs. Uh, these two must be hanged together in, uh, in certain kind of cases, as I've already given, so we want to find more general, precise principles uh, uh, to relate the two. So this will be purely formal principles, uh, uh, akin to how we think about uh, uh, logical norms of one belief, for instance, like uh, uh, principles like consistency, uh, that rational agent should try or aim to be consistent. So we want to find similar uh, formal principles on how these two should hang together. Um, okay, so um, the most immediate, the most uh, obvious way to do this is uh, via the so-called Lockean thesis that you can see in your handout uh, in point four. Um, so Lockean thesis says that uh, belief, uh, uh, 
belief should correspond to a sufficiently high degree of confidence in a proposition. So um, um, this Lockean thesis is not meant to reduce belief to confidences or reduce confidences to beliefs. It just states that uh, these two should hang together in, this, in a way that you believe something, if and only if you have a high confidence in that proposition. So, uh, what exactly do we mean, do we mean when we say high confidence? Um, well, we may have some uh, a specific number in mind, which is uh, strictly greater than 0.5, but less than strictly less than uh, one. Uh, and this uh, degree of uh, this uh, sufficiently high degree must be somewhere in between. Uh, so it should be less than one, but greater than 0.5. And we should, we can say that. Uh, you should believe x if and only if your probability in x is greater or equal to this threshold value s. So we postulate some threshold value between uh, 0.5 and 1 and say that belief corresponds to having this uh, uh, confidence equal to this threshold value. Right. So idea is quite uh, plausible. I think it's most natural comes to mind when we think about how beliefs and credence should interact. So. That's the uh, principle that uh, uh, is uh, most discussed uh, within the literature in one way or another. Um, okay, now I'll introduce why this obvious way to connecting beliefs and credences uh, give rise to problem. Uh, I, will, I will explain two problems. Uh, one is most uh, uh, one is most uh, uh, well known, I would say, and it has to do with the lottery paradox. Um, uh, so, uh, so lottery paradox uh, tells us that the basic assumptions we make about, at least in the literature, uh, within the uh, within epistemology, basic assumptions we can make about belief and uh, credence and how these two should hang together are not uh, consistent with each other. So lottery lottery paradox can be explained in this way. Uh, so imagine uh, there is a uh, uh, fair lottery, let's say consisting of uh, 100 tickets, let's say. Uh, but the amount of tickets is uh, irrelevant here, but for simplicity and specificity, let's take 100 tickets. And uh, we know the lottery is fair in a way that uh, exactly one ticket will win. Uh, so we have beliefs that uh, uh, either ticket one will win, ticket two will win, and so on, uh, up to the 100th ticket. And because it's fair, it's possible uh, to have, it, it seems rationally required to be equally confident that each ticket will win, right? So, because we have a hundred tickets, we'll think about the uniform probability distribution over this uh, tickets winning. So, we'll have one over hundred uh, probability in each ticket winning. Um, so, this, these two assumptions are quite uh, uncontroversial. Uh, then we, we assume Lockean thesis with specific thresholds, threshold 0.99, right, which, which seems to be quite high uh, anyway. So uh, according to this uh, version of Lockean thesis with threshold 99.99, we believe proposition if it's credence is uh, 99% 99 or 0.99 probability. All right. uh, so uh, given this scenario, it is, uh, Lockean's thesis demands us to believe about each individual ticket that it will lose, right? Uh, so it's rational to believe that ticket one will lose because its probability is 0.99 and so on up to the 100th ticket. So already, this uh, three principles, right? Uh, uh, this one assumption that you believe that some ticket will win and the assumption of fairness uh, with the Lockean thesis gives us a strange result that you believe uh, uh, you believe uh, propositions which cannot uh, simultaneously be true, right? Uh, because uh, from from your own perspective, because you believe uh, this junction of uh, not not uh, you believe that this uh, ticket first will lose and ticket second second uh, will lose, but you also believe that some ticket will uh, will win. So there is already an uh, inconsistency, but we can show more. Uh, if we postulate another plausible principle, which is uh, conjunctive closure, uh, if we think that belief should be closed under conjunction, meaning that if you believe 
uh, proposition X, and if you do it proposition Y, then you should also believe X and Y, their conjunction. Uh, uh, and we further assume that you should not believe explicit contradictions, that is, you should not believe proposition X and its negation. Uh, then, uh, then we get uh, we get inconsistency between these principles, and uh, uh, it is fairly easy to see. So, given uh, conjunction, conjunctive closure and uh, the rule of no uh, no contradiction, uh, uh, now uh, given Lockean thesis and conjunctive closure, uh, you believe that uh, you believe this big conjunction involving that ticket one will lose, ticket two will lose, and so on. Um, uh, but uh, you also believe uh, that uh, some ticket will win. So you will have both uh, believe that no ticket will win and some ticket will win. So uh, uh, which, contra which of course violates no contradiction uh, rule. So uh, these principles are not uh, mutually consistent and that's what the plot shows. I have a question. Um you say explicitly that you don't that, that uh, the no contradiction principle says don't believe an explicit contradiction, mm -hmm. not just a contradiction, but an explicit contradiction. Mm -hmm. And I don't see the explicit contradiction mm -hmm. as far as I see. I mean, is there is no sentence A and not A that directly yeah. follows yeah. from how you set it up? Yeah. And then yeah. I was, I, I yeah. 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 I, I see. Yeah. So. Um, uh, now, if we don't assume any uh, view of proposition here and we're just thinking syntactically, right, as, as sentences, then we should also add that uh, uh, if you believe a proposition and another one is logically equivalent to the proposition, then you should also believe that. Oh, yeah. Okay. Then we should. So, uh, and by De Morgan's law, right, we, we get, yeah, we yeah, get sure, explicit sure, contradiction. Sure, sure. But yeah, uh, but if you set this scenario within possible worlds, uh, account of proposition, then uh, yeah, you automatically get. I agree, but th then I, my question, I guess, is why the word explicit? Uh -huh. If you don't think about it in a syntactic way, what does explicit mean? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, um, so imagine if I if I uh, if I reject conjunctive closure, mm -hmm. so I can have uh, I have uh, I can believe set of propositions which are inconsistent. That is, there is no uh, possible world in which all of them are true. But I still don't believe explicit contradiction because I don't close my beliefs under conjunction. Right? So I can have inconsistent beliefs but don't believe explicit contradiction. So in lottery scenario, it will be where like, I, I believe about in each individual ticket that it will lose, but I don't believe conjunction of these propositions. I see. Mm -hmm. I see. I'm not sure whether that's going to work with a normal uh, possible world semantics. No, it's not yet. Yeah. Yeah. I see. Uh -huh. uh, so you'll have to do something. Yeah. So proposition, yeah, you wouldn't understand proposition to be such a possible world. Yeah. Otherwise, there would be the same. Um, exactly. Uh, no, uh, actually, no, uh, actually, it will, it will work because if you don't close. Uh, if you don't close your beliefs under conjunction, so you would believe separate propositions, but not not their conjunction, right? For instance. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. So you yeah, have like two accessibility yeah. relations or something. I know, like. Uh, Let's say uh, uh, we consider two atomic propositions, mm -hmm. right? And you believe each, but you don't believe right. their conjunction. Yeah. So it cannot be modeled. Uh, you cannot give simple possible world semantic to it. Yeah, that was but, yeah. Good. Okay, so, okay, now I understand. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, we would, yeah, but uh, it's good that we qualified this. So, uh, uh, people who don't accept conjunctive rules usually, uh, usually can also uh, like don't accept conjunction closure, but accept no explicit contradictions. They would only because ex you get explicit contradiction when you uh, close your beliefs under uh, conjunction. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, uh, another. Uh, any other question about the lottery lottery paradox? So another another is a uh, is a quite interesting uh, argument against the Lockean thesis. Uh, so if we uh, so this uh, this problem comes when we think about belief in diachronic way, 
So when we uh, consider how belief should change when we acquire new evidence, and uh, as we'll see on Lockean's thesis, uh, uh, you may uh, start believing a proposition and there, then learn something you already believe. And learning what you already believe can undermine your belief, some other belief. So uh, this, this seems to be uh, very counterintuitive, like learning something you already believe, why should it undermine your other beliefs, right? So the case that I explained uh, this problem with is uh, on page two. Uh, so imagine you are, uh, you are in a uh, uh, situation when you think in terms of street proposition, you are concerned with your street proposition. So you are wondering whether or not uh, the lawn is wet uh, and you consider two potential causes of this uh, proposition. One is that it is rained or you either left the sprinkler on and say that in this situation your locking threshold is 0.55. So in this scenario you believe something if its probability is above uh, or equal to 0.55. And as you can see uh, in this scenario, you will believe that lawn is wet because its probability is roughly point, uh, point 0.7. You also believe that it won't rain, and you also believe that sprinkler is on. All of these beliefs are rational, all these Lockean thesis with uh, po uh, 0.55 threshold. Now, suppose that you learned uh, what you believe, that uh, it, it hasn't rained, right? You would learn it to be uh, true. Uh, that it hasn't trained, but uh, even without making explicit probability calculations, it seems clear that once you lose this uh, big support for your belief that it, uh, it has rained, you, you, should no longer, you should no longer believe that loan is worth. Uh, this case should be intuitive, but uh, it can be also modeled with uh, uh, probability assignments, right? So, so this is a case in which you originally uh, believe certain things, so there's something you believe, but lost your uh, lost your other beliefs at long as well, because its probability dropped to uh, 0.48. Is this example clear? Uh, so, uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's another problem uh, with the locuses. Like uh, you can discuss other problems as well, but uh, it's a uh, interesting uh, diachronic dimension uh, which shows. Uh, those problems with the Lockean thesis as well. Okay, now I'll explain the, uh, what, so what will come next in my talk. Uh, so uh, I'll explain uh, 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 another approach to belief credence uh, interaction which rejects the simple Lockean thesis but still retains the core aspect of it. Um, then I, I will show that it raises this problem of context sensitivity or partition sensitivity. And I'll suggest a way of uh, avoiding uh, this problem. Uh, and um, uh, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll say more about this when, when we turn to that section of my talk. Okay, so uh, what are contemporary approaches? So uh, I will, as a representative example, I'll take uh, uh, Hannes Leitgeb's stability theory. Uh, but a uh, similar problem arises for uh, other similar theories as well, like uh, Lean and Kelly's uh, theory of belief credence interaction. Uh, so we'll, we'll only focus on light groups here. Um, so uh, uh, the philosophical idea of this theory is uh, quite simple. Uh, so uh, light group proposal is motivated by the view that a rational belief should be stable uh, with respect to a certain defeaters that you may learn. All right. So uh, defeaters are uh, uh, potential uh, uh, potential uh, ev uh, evidence or knowledge that you may gain in the future, which uh, which will cancel your original belief. Right. Uh, so, like the proposal, this is that your belief should be stable with respect to a certain set of defeaters. So uh, uh, that's the idea. So why we want belief to be stable in this way? So uh, we can give a couple of uh, a couple of motivation to this view. So one thing is uh, uh, one thing is that uh, beliefs like what what function of role belief should have when we think about this. It seems that stability should be a property of rational belief. For instance, 
if I believe something, but I expect this belief to be easily lost during uh, acquisition of new information, then this belief uh, won't be so useful in navigating and uh, in, uh, uh, in doing uh, extended actions, right? Uh, for example, um, uh, for example, if I uh, uh, if I believe that uh, if I believe that it will be a good weather tomorrow, uh, uh, and I don't expect to have this belief in uh, in next uh, hour or so, right? Then it doesn't seem that this belief will be of any use to me. So belief should have some kind of stability. And uh, another motivation, uh, another motivation can come for thinking about like the role of uh, the role of suppositional reasoning. Uh, so uh, I can uh, I can uh, I can add certain propositions to my stock of knowledge and uh, convey reasoning from their own. For example, I can I can say something like um, like the. Uh, Suppose the age of the Earth is uh, three million years, or whatever, and reason from the, their own. So, uh, if a super, if, uh, that would be quite drastic supposition reason. But uh, let's let's take an easier one. Like, suppose the weather will be good tomorrow. Like, I, I make this supposition. So, uh, I want my some of my core beliefs to stay intact after I make such a supposition, right? I don't want suppositions to cancel all my other beliefs. Uh, right? Otherwise, supposition reasoning from be of much use. So uh, these uh, this two things will show that some kind of stability should be an aspect of Russian belief, or at least uh, that's how, we, how it can be motivated. Lightweep has, uh, has other, uh, uh, other motivations as well, but uh, I think this two will be enough uh, for our uh, purposes. So uh, then he proposed a specific way to uh, explicate this, uh, this idea, this uh, stability idea of rational belief. And the explication he endorses, it's called uh, the Humean thesis, uh, with a specific interpretation, but I'll just call it the Humean thesis here. So Humean thesis says the following, that the set of potential defeaters should be a set of all propositions you, you don't disbelieve. So you believe should be stable with respect to a set of propositions you don't disbelieve. So it need not be stable with respect to proposition you disbelieve, only with proposition you don't disprove. So it, in, it includes both beliefs and uh, the proposition you suspend judgment. So, and, uh, he, uh, and precisely, so he calls this the post variant of Humean thesis. So, post variant means that he considers propositions which are uh, doxastically possible from your point of view. So, either you believe them or don't disbelieve them. Right? So, this version of Humean thesis uh, is. A uh, specific statement of this is in uh, 2.1. Uh, so uh, it says that any rational agent's belief and probability function should be such that you believe, you believe proposition X if and only if for all propositions Y, if Y is doxastically possible for you, then probability of X given Y should be greater than R, where R is a number which is uh, equal or greater to 0.5. So uh, the idea is, uh, so basic idea is quite simple. Like when you condition your uh, uh, your beliefs to propositions you don't disbelieve, the probability of this belief proposition should not drop, drop too low. Right? It should be uh, higher than 0.5. So that's, that's the explication. Yeah, go on. Uh, the, the R, uh, it's supposed to be like a, you know, Variable, or is it something that you fix for extralogical reasons, or something? Good, you you fix it for extralogical reasons. But the weakest, uh, the weakest version of like uh, the less demand would be just be uh, more than 0.5. You can uh, we so yeah, but it's a it's a parameter of this thesis. So this uh, this uh, statement here is is uh, still a. It still has undefined parameter in the same, the same sense in which we have undefined parameter in Lokian's thesis. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah. here we have this R same. undefined, but, uh, but we, we can assume that this is just 0 0.5, like okay. more than 0 0.5, okay? Um, so uh, Leibniz also considers other way to explicate this Humean thesis, which takes 
uh, other sets of the features instead of proposition you disbelieve. For example, you may demand that your belief should be stable with respect to proposition you assign certain probability to. That's one way. Another way will be to demand stability only with respect to beliefs you have. Right? But this is, uh, this is more demanding than that. It demands stability to be with respect to uh, propositions you don't disbelieve. Okay. So, um, from this Humean thesis with this interpretation that I've given, he showed quite uh, 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 remarkable results. For instance, uh, uh, he shows that Humean's thesis uh, entails standard principles of uh, doxastic logic, like principles like conjunctive closure, principles like believe that you should believe tautologies, principles like uh, you should not believe contradiction. Uh, so all standard principles of doxastic logic can be uh, deduced from this human thesis. So it's quite interesting. You don't need to assume this from the get-go. So you can deduce this from the stability account of belief, which was quite uh, remarkable. Uh, and he, uh, uh, surprisingly, he also shows that uh, the Schumian thesis is, uh, entails the core idea of the Lockean thesis as well. So earlier, I, uh, we, we took the lottery paradox as showing that you cannot have both doxastic logic and uh, uh, Lockean thesis simultaneously. But uh, what, what now I'll explain is that you can still retain the core idea of Lockean thesis. And the trick is to make uh, Lockean threshold uh, context sensitive. So uh, we don't fix one Lockean threshold, which is good for all contexts. Uh, but we vary Lockean, th Lockean thresholds with respect to uh, context that we are interested in. For instance, in the lottery case, where we have 99, uh, uh, sorry, uh, 100 tickets, 100 fair tickets, uh, in this context, Lockean threshold should be higher than 0.99, but less than 1. Uh, if we have this kind of uh, threshold, then no contradiction will be believed. But in some other contexts, like the uh, more coarse grain context, which I uh, give an example in, uh, with this rain and sprinkler uh, and long being wet, in this context, the Lockean threshold can be considerably lower. So we just uh, fix Lockean threshold uh, relative to which probability assignments we are focusing on. So that's the that's trick how, how he manages to. Uh, get the uh, Lockean, uh, Lockean thesis, or at least uh, context dependent version of Lockean thesis, and doxastic logic. So that's how the trick is done. Um, uh, okay, so uh, any questions until, until now? Uh, okay, so uh, uh, we, have this, uh, we have this context, context dependency on, uh, of Lockean uh, threshold, but we also have other context sensitive uh, variable in, in Leibniz theory, which is, which uh, as I'll argue is, uh, is much more uh, problematic. And this has been noticed by many other people, so it is, uh, and Leibniz also discusses this as a problem, so it's quite uh, well recognized. So on his theory, um, belief is also uh, partition sensitive. By partition sensitivity, I mean the following, that uh, uh, whether or not uh, agent is rational in believing in proposition X depends not only this proposition, but also other propositions that you happen to consider. Right? So, uh, uh, so first I'll say why this aspect of his theory may be a good making feature of his theory, like advantage of his theory, and then I'll explain why, it's, why it also has extremely uh, in, uh, implausible consequences. So, uh, so this feature of his theory allows slightly to give a solution to the lottery paradox, which is quite neat. So, uh, so uh, here is the explanation. So in lottery paradox, we have two conflicting intuitions. One intuition is that it is rational to believe that lottery ticket will lose because probability is so high. Another intuition is that we shouldn't believe it because otherwise we'll at least believe in consistent set of propositions. So we have this conflicting intuition about this. I know that some people don't have intuitions that you should believe lottery tickets, 
But yeah, let's, let's suppose that there is such intuition. So he says we can explain why we have this conflicting intuition about this scenario. He says that when, when we just focus on uh, whether or not this ticket will lose or not, let's say ticket one, here we are focusing on very coarse-grained set of possibilities, possibilities in which this ticket will win or lose. Okay, so um, um, uh, uh, the parameter which, uh, uh, which explicitly states how many possibilities we are considering is uh, capital W. So capital W is a set of all possibilities we take into account. So in a coarse grain context, when we only, uh, uh, only consider two possibilities, this is, let's say, that ticket one will win, and this is that ticket one will lose. Uh, uh, here, uh, this capital W is a set of two possibilities. But we can also think about which ticket will win uh, or lose, like having into mind like all hundred possibilities, if we are thinking about hundred uh, lottery consisting of hundred tickets. So then we have different sets of possibilities. So it would be W1, W2, up to W100. Okay. So on, on his account, uh, it is rationally permissible to believe that ticket one will lose in this context, but not in this context. Okay? Because uh, on this context you cannot uh, have uh, you cannot satisfy this union thesis. So this, uh, so I, I also want to uh, comment on how we can figure out like whether or not union thesis is uh, satisfied or not. Uh, uh, fortunately, uh, finding out whether or not uh, set of beliefs and uh, probability functions satisfies the union thesis, it's very, it's very computationally simple to determine this. Uh, we only need to look whether the following condition, which likely because outclassing condition is satisfied. Uh, so condition is quite simple. So uh, uh, if you have a set of possibilities, and if there is a proposition with respect to these possibilities, uh, such that each world in which this proposition is true is still more probable than the negation of this proposition, then uh, uh, this proposition is rational to believe, and basically you can logically you can uh, get uh, uh, deductive closure of this uh, proposition, and this will give you belief set. Uh, here's what I mean. Uh, like take this fine-grained context. Uh, so uh, to find out whether or not some proposition is rational to believe here, we can think uh, this way. Like, is there any proposition X? such that uh, if x is true uh, in, uh, say, uh, w, uh, i, uh, then uh, probability of this proposition should be greater than probability of not x. Okay? So this is, uh, this is what you, we should look at. Uh, so in, in lottery cases, because we have a uniform probability distribution, <coughs> every possibility is of equal probability or associated equal probability, we don't get any, any such proposition. Because each world in which any proposition is true, there is another world outside it which is equally probable. So uh, this outclassing condition won't be satisfied. So a proposition which satisfies this outclassing condition is called stable proposition by Leibniz. So we won't get any stable proposition here. So computation is quite simple uh, to determine with respect to any finite. Uh, no, at least for computers, it's very easy to find out whether or not this. Uh, uh, outclassing conditions, so, uh, okay. So uh, here, this context sensitivity of Leibniz approach is working on, on his favor, right? So he he can say that look, I have a solution to lottery paradox in a way that uh, keeps this intuition we had that it's both uh, uh, reasonable to believe that no pro uh, this ticket will lose and also reasonable to think that we should not believe anything.
So it, it works in its favor, in his favor in this uh, case. Um, but uh, all is not so good uh, with this context sensitivity, uh, which I'll uh, explain with the following simple uh, example. Um, um, so I'm now uh, in the uh, 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 fourth page of my handout. So I'll look at uh, uh, section uh, 2.6 um, and uh, and we will first consider the example uh, uh, example that I give there. Uh, so the example is as follows. Like suppose you are thinking about whether your colleague Bob owns a Honda or not and call this proposition H. So you are 0.66 confident that uh, Bob owns uh, Honda. And if you are only focusing on this proposition H, then it's uh, rational according to light bit theory to believe that H, because it has uh, it's a stable proposition in, in this coarse grained situation. It has sufficiently high probability. Now, uh, suppose for some reason, we don't need to get into, you, you start considering completely irrelevant proposition, for instance, whether or not a coin landed heads or not, and suppose you are 50% confident that it will land heads or tails. Now let's fine grain our uh, reasoning context, include this proposition as well, and as it happens, in this context it's no longer rational or like if sorry to be that uh, H. Because uh, uh, this uh, proposition uh, uh, won't be stable, and there won't be any stable proposition here except the trivial propositions that uh, some of these possibilities are true. So, so the problem is this: like considering the relevant propositions, we should not uh, influence our beliefs at all. <laughs> but here, I, I start considering uh, irrelevant proposition, but I'm losing my beliefs. So. Uh, uh, so uh, Dovan uh, nicely uh, summarizes uh, uh, impossibility of this. Uh, so let me find out. Um, yeah. Uh, so. Um, yeah, what Dovan says, uh, and many others uh, also argue this, is that if stability theory is supposed to be a theory of rational belief, we, should, we must have some kind of story of which contexts are relevant to consider and which not. If you just say that any, any, uh, uh, anything goes as far as uh, uh, context as course says, that we get this uh, awfully Bad uh, scenarios where we're just considering the relevant proposition defeats our, our uh, beliefs. Yes, I was going to say that that was actually. It's funny because that was that's that question about about where you focus your attention. That was my initial reaction to your lawn case, mm -hmm. right? Because I, I sort of I, I was thinking I was like I was like that seems weird. How can that be right? But then I thought to myself, well, wait. Like what I feel like I would probably do in that situation is I would keep my belief that the lawn was wet. But then if you were like, but remember your belief that the sprinkler was on was not very strong. Mm -hmm. Then I would go back and say, oh right, that was a pretty weak belief. I probably should now believe that the lawn is dry. Mm -hmm. I would go back. So like revising in light of relevant evidence makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. But revising in light of irrelevant evidence seems like a big problem. That's just, it's a, yeah, that's a really neat, yeah. It, it's gonna, it's gonna, that, you're gonna get the same problem regardless of whether or not the, 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 the change in partition actually has to do with Mm -hmm. Actually, has to do with the problem. That's really cool. Yeah, but in long cases, in long cases, you, you uh, I should also point out that when you find out that uh, it has not rained, your probability that lawn is wet will come down to less to less than 0.5. So, we, uh, so uh, here I, I was implicitly assuming uh, the view that you should not believe proposition which you are not more confident than the negation. Of the mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, but uh, in long cases, this uh, propositions that we are considering are all causally relevant. So this has some kind of unity to it. But uh, it, uh, but uh, likely doesn't have any story about which uh, 
uh, contexts are relevant or not, like doesn't consider it at all. He thinks it's a solely pragmatic matter. Mm -hmm. So then people uh, pointed out that it has a very plausible uh, consequences. Did so, he react to that? Sorry? Did he react to Duvan's uh, criticism? Uh, about context sensitivity, yes. But uh, I have not seen him commenting on this kind of counterexamples. So, but everybody, like everybody, is impressed by uh, but by the uh, results he got, formal results. But uh, all reviews uh, find this to be highly plausible aspect of his theory. So just any context goes, and your belief just crumble. Like, uh, for, for, like let me put it this way. So uh, stability. Uh, let's say stability is a good making feature of, of, of belief. We accept this. But why not worry about stability across context, right? <laughs> so he's only worried about stability within a context. Mm -hmm. But whenever I change my uh, uh, partition of possibilities, beliefs can crumble. And uh, that doesn't seem to be correct. As I said, he, uh, he, he thinks that there are possible uh, applications of this in lottery. At the end, he recognizes it, that this is a cost of the theory, but thinks that overall it's a, uh, it's a cost we, we should be willing to pay to get these nice results. Uh, but yeah, he doesn't uh, respond to the relevant uh, proposition example as far as I know uh, so far. Uh, okay, so all uh, I think this problem uh, problem should be yeah uh, uh, quite clear that like considering the relevant proposition cannot alter my beliefs. It just uh, uh, not how how rational belief should work. Um, uh, okay, so uh, uh, so we have this. Um, uh, we have this problem. Uh, oh, uh, there are uh, so yeah. So yeah, I, I found those uh, citations exactly here. So so uh, so people uh, well, others and other also uh, ask for like uh, say, like you, we should have some kind of theory at least if we make the really context sensitive. Well, what should we pay attention to or what not? Uh, so uh, just saying that belief is context sensitive won't gonna work. Uh, uh, and given that we have such immediate problems. Uh, it, it's a, it's not a plausible option. I think. Just to accept that belief is not exist. Now I want to point out that other theories of belief credence interaction, like uh, Lin and Kelly's theory, uh, have similar problems with context sensitivity. Not with this example, uh, uh, but their theories are also context sensitive. In lottery case, for example, in many other cases. So, and they actually prove the general result that all theories will be context sensitive if they if they want to have some kind of logical norms built into it. So uh, this will be a general feature of uh, formal theories if they want to satisfy other, other views as well. OK. Um, uh, another problem, uh, another problem uh, uh, that I want to point out is uh, this uh, second problem on, uh, on page 4. Uh, so, uh, so this was this argument was made by Dorian and uh, Roth. So they they saying the following. So, like Leibniz theory and other theories as well are uh, are built on toy examples. Like we only consider a couple of possibilities. Okay, in lottery case we consider many, but still it's a toy example because we are only focusing on lottery. Uh, and they wanted to know how the situation will be if you take a more realistic approach and think about. Uh, a lot of a lot of more possibilities, and uh, they are curious to find out uh, whether or not uh, like if sorry and other theories as well will support any beliefs which are not certain in this other more realistic context. Uh, and they got a formal result which says that like uh, it's unlikely that a random distribution of probability will, will get you any any non certain beliefs if we expand uh, the sets of possibilities. So uh, so the problem is this that. The stability theory becomes very skeptical once you include a lot of propositions in your context of reasoning. Okay, it, it, it can work with three, four possibilities, or with the sprinkle example, we only have eight examples and uh, uh, we don't even need that much there. But when we take into account our like beliefs we have in our uh, uh, background, which we don't focus on explicitly, then uh, uh, Lightning theory is very similar to what it's called certainty proposal. Certainty proposal is believe something which you are certain of and nothing else. So it becomes more or less the same. So uh, that's another problem. I will, I will be also discussing this. So, so 
So oh, yeah. what do you mean by more or less the same? Uh, uh, I mean that you, you need very... For instance, let's take a probability assignment over thousand possibilities, mm -hmm. right? And think like randomly assigning some probability uh, values to them. Like we consider hundreds, thousands of probability assignments, and the probability that uh, any such probability assignment will give you any non-skeptical belief will be very low. So most probability assignment won't won't uh, uh, support any any non-skeptical belief. By no skeptical, I mean this probably true. So they have a Monte Carlo simulation of these scenarios and uh, consider like uh, how this will work. And the interesting part is that light gives theory is overly skeptical in such situations, but uh, Lin and Kelly, for example, is not that, that skeptical. So they think it's a good uh, evidence uh, against light gives you and for others. For um, so, uh, yeah. So that's, that's another problem. So on his account, once we fine-grained sets of possibilities, like when we focus on more, beliefs will crumble. Like, likely to crumble. Not always, but they will likely to crumble. Okay. So um, uh, I'm going to be addressing both of these problems uh, next. Uh, uh, and uh, I'll begin with... Uh, uh, I'll begin with uh, a second, actually. Second. Um, Okay, um, so now I'm on the part four of my uh, handout. Um, 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 okay, so um, uh, let's take, the, take this uh, issue about uh, like whether or not belief should be defined over many sets of possi many possibilities, like over partition of many possibilities. So, uh, Dogan and Roth gives us estimates, which they cite from other authors, that a person's declarative knowledge base eventually approximates one million pieces of knowledge. Uh, so, uh, uh, takes this to be like uh, uh, beliefs and not, uh, not knowledge, but that's, that's not crucial. So, we can think like this, that there are a million independent propositions which represent our complete belief set. Uh, and if these beliefs are independent, as we are assuming, so uh, there will be two to the power of million uh, possibilities associated with this. Um, okay. Uh, now I, I, I'm not uh, I'm not sure that uh, this uh, this uh, supports their criticism in a way that they think. Now, uh, uh, because think about. Uh, uh, think about computationally, like if we have such a vast, uh, like of course we have such a vast uh, beliefs in our head, um, uh, and think about uh, whether or not there is a probability assignment over all of these possibilities, right? Uh, so if we accept that, then we have to assign probabilities, or, or, or let like computer assign or our brain assign probabilities to this absolutely vast number of possibilities. Mm -hmm. That doesn't seem to be uh, computationally realistic. And uh, actually, uh, reflecting on cases like this, today April, said that uh, uh, something different uh, uh, is more probable to be going on here. So, uh, he, uh, so he suggests that uh, uh, there is no, like, even, even when we think about rational agents here, and uh, now I'm uh, speaking. Uh, 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 now this is my opinion. You, 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 when we are speaking about right, rational agent, it doesn't seem to be computationally tractable to define one probability assignment over this vast space of possibilities, right? So, first suggestion is this: that uh, uh, like we have much better grasp on uh, uh, probabilities that are conditional rather than this long conjunctive probabilities which has to be assigned to worlds. So it, uh, it seems that uh, there are several, uh, several probability distributions that are, represent our knowledge, not just one. And these probability distributions are about like closely connected sets of propositions. So I, I don't think it's realistic to think that there is this one big picture uh, of all we have. We have like separate uh, interests, separate uh, uh, focuses, separate topics, and uh, maybe it's not that bad. 
uh, that uh, beliefs are defined in a rather small sets of possibilities. So I, I'm not sure that that's 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 uh, uh, that's good evidence for uh, for the claim. So um, and this this also uh, this this point is also strengthened when we think about what's a point what what is the point of belief in the first place. Uh, like I'm speaking about categorical belief here. Like, uh, so many people think that categorical beliefs simplify our reasoning. So uh, compared to probabilistic reasoning, uh, right? Probabilistic reasoning is notoriously hard for humans, uh, and pro e even absent that, absent that psychological fact, uh, propositional reasoning seems to be much simpler. Like we just uh, uh, think categorically, like assume this is true, or like I believe this, what falls from this, so on. Um, so if we, if belief will uh, simplify reasoning, then we would expect and we want like this belief reasoning to be constrained by a small number of propositions. Otherwise, if we consider a lot of proposition, <laughs> right, reasoning with them won't be uh, reason not be reliable at all. Because, for example, let's say I have an argument for some philosophical position. Let's say that this argument demands me to ascend to 20 propositions. Now, probably, conjunction of these 20 propositions won't be very high. So arguments, like if argument is cached out in propositional terms, like the more premises I need, <laughs> less likely that my reasoning is probabilistically reliable. So, uh, uh, so beliefs, if they are useful, they will be useful in a, a small uh, constrained number of reasoning contexts, right? And uh, not in a large one. So demanding to believe to cohere with all our sets of possibilities would uh, would be abandoning this uh, uh, simplified world that belief had. Uh, so otherwise, beliefs will like this error probabilities would accumulate a lot, and uh, beliefs won't be reason, uh, uh, reliable. So uh, this has been pointed out by Richard Foley. Uh, uh, things that, like, uh, he was considering reductive types of argument. He says that if reductive argument has a lot of premises, right, uh, which are also not very well theoretically connected, I won't be so worried about this reductio because maybe there's some uh, errors there. Like, not in terms of reasoning, but in terms of some premise not being true. But whenever we have, like, uh, reductio which has small number of premises, all are theoretically intertwined, intertwined, and of course this reductio is much more significant. Right? So the same goes with other types of arguments. Like if I have an argument which requires all premises to be true, uh, whenever the number of premises increases, reliability of reasoning decreases. So uh, uh, beliefs, if they are useful, will be only useful for uh, like uh, in situation which Light considers and not in very. Uh, uh, finely grained uh, situation. Yeah. If you say a lot of premises, uh, do you mean it in a really like uh, numerical way? Uh, that, that seems like maybe this meant more something for the discussion. This is very counterintuitive to me that it would be a matter of counting mm -hmm. or something like that. Uh, I completely agree with the interwovenness. I mean, mm -hmm. as soon as premises are for very inter non. Um, like non-related areas, uh, and where for which you have your very unrelated beliefs and uh, um, reasons, uh, um, it's going to be problematic to just uh, use them as premises together, mm -hmm. or you're not going to be assuming that it's going to work anyway. Um, but that, I mean, maybe I'm looking from at this from a too mathematical point of view, but. It seems like you can always uh, reformulate premises so that they become, they get a higher number or something like Good. that. Yeah. Um, or there is like schemas in mathematics or other axiom, axiom systems that are actually an infinity of sentences, infinity of premises that are very yeah, efficiently yeah. Mm -hmm. formulated as a schema. Mm -hmm. um, which of course an infinity is a very large number of premises, <laughs> but it's one schema, so it's about one topic, and you should accept it as a whole. Mm -hmm. And so it's very like natural to to, to be uh, touched by reduction arguments based on one schema. Yeah, you see my point. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. The number intuitively doesn't matter. Uh -huh. um, maybe you don't agree with that, but then I would like. To uh, no, I, I fully agree. Yeah. 
No, numbers, <coughs> yeah, go on. No, no, just, just I wanted to make sure that uh, many premises, you, whether you meant it in a numerical way, yeah. Uh, yeah. that you could count, or it's more a matter of many different premises. Uh -huh. many Very good, yeah. Yeah, of course, it's a sheer number is not relevant. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, uh, that's, that's so the, my yeah, machine number is not relevant. But because, uh, like in mathematical reasoning, uh, there are uh, deductive, uh, uh, deductive relationships, right? Even with the premise, uh, there can be many premise arguments, uh, so many step arguments. And in ordinary reasoning, premises are not usually as strongly interwoven together. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so because there are small error probabilities within each, each premises. Uh, error probability of the conclusion will increase. So number will be relevant because yeah, this very tight interconnectedness is not present in ordinary non-deductive reasoning. Mm -hmm. So, but only number, of course, yeah, only numbers are not relevant. Yes. Yeah, only numbers are not relevant. Uh, 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 we have, uh, uh, yeah, I'll, uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, because in, in usual reasoning. Uh, uh, it, it's uh, it's very safe to assume that adding a premise is adding uh, another error uh, possibility of error. That's why number may be relevant. But in mathematical context, uh, yes, uh, that's, that won't be relevant at all. Um, yeah, good. Um, so uh, beliefs simplify reasoning, and this simplification comes with a price. Uh, and the price is that uh, when we reason with a large set of propositions that are not very strongly intertwined, uh, such reasoning is often very unreliable uh, because the joint probability of uh, all premises can go very low. So this is what happens in a way in a, a lottery, uh, lottery case scenarios. Right? Well, there actually you get a negative correlation between premises. Right? So uh, you get zero probability from the argument which is deductive about it. And so, yeah. Um, uh, okay. Um, uh, so, you know, so I, I, I think this shows that in ordinary, uh, uh, ordinary reasoning, for example, reasoning which involves like postulating several different uh, potential causes of some phenomena, like in this lone example, like I consider was it rain or sprinkle uh, or whatever. Uh, in such cases, uh, premises are not usually very strongly. So, a uh, small number of propositions to be considered uh, is more helpful. Okay, now I, I, I will move to uh, the substantial part, uh, more substantial part of the which is a positive suggestion about how we can think about uh, which contexts are relevant. So, this uh, proposal follows Dovin's uh, uh, criticism. So, his, he, his challenge is as follows that we need some kind of story which contexts are relevant. And which are not, otherwise uh, we don't have really a theory of rational belief. Um, so uh, my first my proposal starts with this uh, uh, very uh, basic philosophical idea that uh, uh, rational belief is based on some evidence or some reasons, right? We just we don't, don't as a rational rational agent doesn't just believe anything. There is a reason uh, supporting propositions which he has. Okay, of course we don't need to consider like the whole structure of justification, but for usual beliefs we are interested in whether or not this treatment will be effective, uh, whether or not it will rain tomorrow or whatever. There's reasons for uh, holding beliefs that we have. Um, uh, so uh, uh, in the example, uh, in this figure three example, for example, when Tracy believes that her loan is wet, so her reasons, or doesn't believe it, her reason has to do with whether or not she believes that it will rain, or it has rained, or whether or not spring or something. Um, uh, 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 okay, so proposal is, uh, in a general philosophical term, which I'll explicate next, will be as follows. So the contexts which are re relevant, uh, whether or not you believe a proposition or not, are contexts which represent your, the structure of your evidence. So that's a basic idea. This is a very vague idea because it doesn't really uh, help us to uh, put down like exact context which you have to consider. So uh, a way to explicate this proposal is uh, the following, which uses some uh, terms from uh, uh, Bayesian network theory. 
so uh, uh, this is a point four point four. Uh, so uh, uh, I find the term called basic partition. So uh, when we consider proposition L, for example, the traces loans is wet. Uh, so basic basic partition with respect to this proposition will be a set of all propositions that are immediately explanatorily prior to L. Uh, uh, sorry, it should be it should be T. Uh, yeah, I found prior to T. Um, so uh, uh, when I want to know whether or not uh, uh, like which context should I consider uh, with respect to this proposition, the trace is one is right, I should consider propositions which are immediately explanatorily prior. So uh, uh, what does uh, what does this term mean? Uh, so we will think about this uh, term in, uh, in terms of a network, which you can see in Figure three. So uh, uh, so in this network, we are we have uh, two potential causes of lawn being wet. One is raining, and another is a sprinkler is wet. Uh, and there is also another proposition in this network, which is that Jack's lawn is wet. Now, Jack's lawn is wet is not uh, uh, any, a cause of Tracy's lawn being wet. Like they can share the same cause, but uh, they, uh, they are not causes of each other, right? Um, so, in, uh, here, we have a, uh, here we have a network which is directed, acyclic graph or DAG for short. And um, this, this is a graph which doesn't have any loops in it. So intuitively, it should represent causal structure of the situation we are considering. And a DAG, this uh, uh, graph without loops, which, uh, which satisfies the following condi condition, which is called Markov condition, is called a Bayesian network. So Markov condition is uh, quite uh, simple. It says the following, that the DAG obeys the Markov condition, if and only if, given its parents, Parents are like uh, the ones who has arrow to a child, right? So, um, so these are these are parents, and this is a child here. Um, so it says the following: that um, uh, we have this Markov condition here, if we assume parents of this variable, then adding something which is uh, non-descendant of this, uh, I mean, uh, uh, it's not a parent or descendant of this, uh, this won't be probabilistically relevant. So whenever we have the satisfaction of this principle, we have a dark which satisfies Markov condition. Um, so uh, conditional on parents, and node is probabilistically independent of its non-descendants. Uh, so Markov condition is very uh, uh, is highly intuitive when we think about causal terms, because causes in, in this kind of scenarios are uh, local. Uh, for example, suppose there is a cause of this here, some other cause. So if I already know this, this one is not relevant. Right, so it's local. I need to only know like prior causes, um, uh, and uh, uh, it is uh, it is also one directional. Like if there is a causal arrow here, there is no back. So one directionality and locality is what we are what we are having here, um, uh, and uh, it's it's highly probable uh, when we think about uh, uh, this dark representing causal structure. The situation. So, uh, uh, going back to my uh, uh, suggestion, um, set of all propositions that are immediately explanatorily prior. By this here, I mean these this two variables. These are ones who are uh, immediately uh, explanatorily prior. Uh, and uh, this, uh, this term uh, and this kind of approach uh, is. Uh, uh, influenced by by paper by uh, uh, by Navin uh, I'm not sure if I pronounce the name correctly, but uh, he has this approach for uh, for another purpose for defining a 
what he calls basic probability, which is not relevant here at all. But yeah, so uh, this is uh, this is suggestion. So when we when we think about basic context with respect to this proposition, this gives us basic context and not this. This is a bit arbitrary at this point, but I'll try to moderate this a bit. So, uh, so this proposition is only relevant here for this because it influences our uh, probability of this. So, for example, if I learn that this is true, this will change probability of this and gets um, uh, influenced from here. So, only things which are directly influencing my, my probability is uh, these uh, immediate parents. Um, um, so, if we think about, uh, so motivation is this, like why, why it's not arbitrary to focus on immediate parents. Because, imme imme because uh, causality is uh, uh, local and it's not cyclic, we only need to look at parents. Uh, so, if we take this approach, like uh, uh, look at page 6, it's the last page. Uh, the problem of irrelevant proposition is, uh, will be avoided. Why? Because irrelevant propositions are something like this. They are not connected to this network at all. So uh, uh, we, avoid, uh, we avoid considering, like we, avoid, uh, like we have an explanation why we need to, need, like why we need not to be worried by, by this other proposition. And also, it explains why stability is important with respect to this network, but not, in, not with respect to propositions which are not part of the network, right? Because they won't influence probability of this at all, this proposition. Um, um, and uh, another point is that because um, uh, because this causal structure of the situation usually represented by only a handful of proposition, not always, but usually, uh, it is it is far well attuned with this idea that belief is only useful in such kind of coarse graining, coarse graining situation, and not in very fine grained situation. Um, okay, this is a basic proposal, which uh, maybe will become. Uh, clearer once I consider some objection, which which is next okay. part. Yeah. Go I have a question. Yeah. Uh, you really use the causal diagram in the causal relation between beliefs, while the, the relation between propositions are logical relation and not causal. Mm -hmm. So mm, then you, you it may be not suit the causal the causal analysis may be not not perfect. Mm, Cannot be used for the the relation between your beliefs. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, um, so uh, Bayesian networks, which is like Markov condition, yeah, uh, usually are uh, used for uh, causal representation of causal reasoning. Yeah. Okay. Uh, of course, representation of causal reasoning is done by propositions. What, like we are still considering proposition. And we assume, like, and the uh, probabilities we defined are given by causal relationships, right? So, well, that, yeah. it, it also can be that in, in, in the direction A to B, then uh, is not means A entails B, not cause. Uh -huh. that, then, if I have A, then definitely I have a B. But in causal relation, um, I just count the probability of B. Is depends on the A, not, not perfectly. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. So, so yeah, when we have when we have a, a logical relationship, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. So, um, uh, so so it's not mandatory for uh, Bayesian networks to represent uh, causal structures. Yeah. Like so there can be representation of partful relationship, for example. Like for example, uh, 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 acceleration and uh, mass and gravitation can be also uh, represented by uh, by uh, Bayesian network. So partial relationship uh, can be represented as a, as a stuff as well. Causal rep causal interpretation is more uh, most uh, used, but it's not mandatory. Um, so uh, the relationship here, which I'm interested in, uh, in general, are epistemic relations, not only causal relations. Uh, uh, yeah, 
So uh, and uh, that's why that's why uh, Bayesian networks are useful, other than causal causal uh, scenarios. Um, yeah. Um, um, but here, uh, so I, I put put my claim in terms of uh, 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 expa explanation. What is direct explanation of what? So if if there are other explanation other than uh, causal explanation, which probably there are, right? So we don't always need to consider. Um, we don't always need to consider a causal interpretation of the network. Um, uh, but uh, like for, uh, if if for example you, yeah so like this is called Hume's thesis. If Hume is right and causal connection are most important for our beliefs, then it will be a useful uh, useful uh, approach uh, even if it's not fully general. Uh, okay, so uh, first objection uh, is uh, we can call into question this uh, uh, demand uh, to focus only on. Uh, uh, immediate parents. Okay, you know, and, uh, going back to what you said also. Uh, so uh, here, par I, by parents, I mean things which we think are most directly related to this one. Okay. So every other influences which comes from T from other side, which come from this, other than finding out this directly. So direct epistemic priority is uh, what I'm interested in. Um, okay, so one is like, why only focus on this? What is wrong with considering this as well? Like, isn't it arbitrary to focus on parents and uh, ignore non-descendants, which are also part of Bayesian network? So, uh, so yeah, this is uh, this is uh, this is a fair point. Um, so. Uh, uh, at this point, I think that uh, uh, like belief with respect to basic propositions can define uh, like weaker notion of belief. If belief is stable with respect to whole network, that's good. That's a stronger sense of belief. But uh, we can still get some special partitioning of propositions which are crucial. And they are special because all influences on this should come from, from their parents. So they still have special role, uh, but uh, I would concede that uh, if we have a network, these propositions are still relevant in some sense. Okay, I, I have not uh, I have not worked out uh, detail of this, but uh, I would still think that this is a this is a more basic, like considering the parents. Um, uh, okay, and second objection is. Uh, uh, is as follows. Uh, what if causal structure of, or evidential structure of situation is not not given, right? Or I'm not certain whether or not like which uh, network represents correctly, uh, uh, which network represents correctly my uh, evidence. So what should we do? Uh, what we should do then? So uh, yeah, so that, that will be a. Uh, uh, that will be an issue in this case. Uh, yeah, the uh, formal details of this is uh, is not uh, it's not it's not very important here. But I think we should take into account some kind of higher order uncertainty about uh, about wo which variables are parents or which are not. Okay, but even if we get something where there is this causal knowledge or evidential knowledge, it's it's still uh, it still will be something. Okay, so um, so that will be uh, that will be my answer on this. And uh, and final uh, final section will be uh, uh, whether whether this approach can be applied to uh, lottery and uh, preface paradox. Now, lottery paradox uh, lottery paradox is uh, is a it's unclear to me which partition is <laughs> which partition should we focus on there. Because uh, there is no like tickets, like, uh, so uh, imagine we only have uh, three ticket lottery. Right. So of course probability of ticket three winning. Um, 
there is sense in which uh, these are related in the sense that if we assume this to, to be false, of course it changes the probability of theta 3 using it. But it's, uh, I'm not sure whether or not this correctly represents the causal structure of our evidence. I would say more like we have this evidence that ticket has been drawn and uh, there are three possible ways to look at it. Right? If we think about this way, then this approach recommends that belief in proposition 1 winning is, uh, losing is rational. But uh, I would admit that it doesn't really translate well to this kind of scenario. Uh, but a uh, better translation would be in preface paradox situation. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm curious what you think about this after. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, um, so context sensitive approaches are, uh, I think, difficulty with uh, with uh, lottery uh, with preface paradox. So preface paradox. Uh, uh, just to briefly say what it is, it's like when the author of a book, like large book, so let's say history book on here, I have an example of Darwin's On the Origin of Species. Uh, when the author publishes a book, this book creates a specific context, right, uh, which unifies all the assertions you made there. So the paradox it will be like, uh, if you write each and every sentence there, uh, and if you are a reasonable person, you wouldn't write something in an affirmative uh, way if you don't believe what you write. Okay? Uh, but as a modest person, you, you would accept that there will be some mistakes uh, in the book. So, uh, so uh, if book creates one context, uh, then uh, Leibniz's proposal has a problem there, right? Uh, he has a solution developed, but I'll discuss it here. So, uh, so the problem is that, uh, as Leibniz writes, by writing and publishing the book, the author seems to express some sort of commitment to all of the statements in the book taken as a whole. Uh, so this book creates a context of its own. Um, so here, uh, uh, one way this approach can be useful uh, is as follows. So, um, the author doesn't, uh, like when considers the author, when, when she considers the, uh, the, uh, all, each and every sentence she made, she made in, in the book, um, there, so there is an obvious sense in which she shouldn't be used at all of the words too. So this brings me uh, back to the number issue, right? Even all statements in the book are somehow related because the relation is not as strong as in mathematical proof, so the error probability will accumulate. So that's how numbers will be important. So, so uh, my approach will be as follows. So while um, uh, the book creates special context, not all claims in the book are of equal importance for the general claim, like general argument of the book. So, uh, so I think context sensitivity can still be applied there. So, for example, if we take a simple example, like uh, Darwin's book, like he, he makes a lot of lots of claims uh, 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 in the book. So, uh, uh, some of the claims has to do with uh, biology, geography, and so on. Not all of them are uh, very crucial to his main argument. Right? So, uh, so, uh, so what I will say here is that uh, an author of the book must have a, a strong belief, or at least belief, in a main claim of the book, whatever it is. In Darwin's case, it's quite easy because uh, it's a mechanism of uh, natural selection, uh, right? So, uh, so this should also this can be also represented as a network here. For in the simple network, I only take. Uh, two paired variables, of course, the full network will be much more complicated. Uh, so, uh, with respect to this network, uh, we, we can demand that the author's belief should be stable. But not, not with respect to whole, whole book, uh, which will create very fine graining sets of possibilities. Um, so, that would be one way to justify a complex sensitive approach to uh, preface paradox as well, like to differentiate which. Uh, statements are crucial to what and to create a basic network of it. So yes, that's that will be my presentation. Thank you.
you very much. Uh, do we take a five minute break or do we immediately go to Christian time? Yeah. I would say we keep we can just keep rolling since we're since we're half an hour from the end. Since since we interrupted a lot, we, we can yes, yes, yes. Now, this was also part of the question and not Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. 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 Yeah. yeah. We did some of it in advance. Yeah. I'm really interested by this, 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 the idea of what this does to the lottery paradox. I think this is a really interesting because this is, this actually gets a little bit at one's question about, about what is it that's relevant about the structure of the lot? What's weird about the, what's weird about the lottery is it almost seems like, it's like there's a, there's a second level where it's not just that we have the arrows from the, you know, the draw to the tickets. It's also that we have constraints between what values the arrows can take depending on what else, like, you can't just, you can't just free assign, you know, even if you, even, you know, uh, 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 the arrows aren't independent from each other mm -hmm. in a very weird and complicated way. And I just don't know, this seems to me like the kind of thing that, like, the Carnegie Mellon base net people would have thought about how to model. I just have no idea how they did it. If you, mm -hmm. if you like, tried to, to, to see how, how people, like, how, what are the proposals on offer about how to model the connections in that kind of thing? No, so this can be represented by a Bayesian network without problem. So that won't be an issue. So the issue is that it won't represent causal structure. Like so there is some kind of other structure represented, like a structure of causal dependency uh, because of the information we have, but not like uh, so ticket three uh, winning. Uh, I like it's not that these two losing are causal <laughs> causes of. Right. But it can be very easily represented by a Bayesian network. It just it doesn't represent causal structure in the same way that it's Yeah. Uh, but uh, with 100 tickets, it's like you will get a lot of errors. But with five tickets, it's quite, yeah, it, it's, it's easily, easily done. Uh, so Bayesian networks can be applied in cases in which we don't have really this kind of causal influences, right? It can model evidential connections as well. Um, uh, but co correct causal structure, I would say, will be like there is some troll happening, mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah, like that, that's a cause of which ticket will win or not. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, others will be just informations about what the draw will be and influence from the. Uh, uh, yeah. The thing is that we don't get any interesting Bayesian network from this. Right? Mm -hmm. it, it's not. It's not useful to represent lottery cases in, in Bayesian networks. Won't simplify anything or won't make anything more obvious. Sure. Yeah, okay, I see that makes sense. So you have you have the kind of draw, you have the sort of draw sub network that shows the causal influence. And then you have all these other sort of non-causal kind of constraint networks that, mm -hmm. that that spell the constraints out. But yeah, that doesn't yeah, that doesn't really teach us anything. Mm -hmm. Sure. I see what you mean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. That's helpful. Mm -hmm. Um, I have a couple of questions. First of all, I really like the proposal. Um, uh, how to organize my questions a bit. Um, so, something with Bayesian nets that I always um, like in case we apply to epistemology um, and it seems kind of relevant here even more than elsewhere um, if we talk about lottery paradox and so on and it's related to the trust question I guess and maybe it's just a confusion in my head but um, there seems to be a huge difference in sort of epistemic causes like the causes why you have certain beliefs mm -hmm. or you, why you would have certain beliefs where you uh, confronted with some other information that you don't in fact have, but there's some, like, yeah, the way your brain works, uh, independent of anything existing outside of there. It's like the, the causal stuff going on in your head, um, whether that's the kind of thing you really want to uh, model, 
for such kind of problems because we are interested in, in beliefs and not mm -hmm. so much in um, <clears throat> in events uh, mm -hmm. or whether we really want to um, um, have beliefs about the objective causes in the world, you know, uh, or objective other relations uh, that are explanatory. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not sure whether my question is very clear, but it seems um, that the, 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 the two kind of approaches you might have to to uh, to, to the lottery paradox, uh, where you see like one draw is the cause of mm -hmm. the thing happening, then um, it's really about the causes in a in an ordinary kind of sense, in, a, in an subjective kind of sense, mm -hmm. while to get the right kind of context, you have the sort of right sort of uh, epistemological uh, uh, things dropping out. I'd expect more a network that is about how agents deal with information. Uh, like, oh, there's that draw uh, that's going to change my gradients that way. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and, 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 and that's also a f sort of causation, right? I mean, it's, it's, but it's not causation of things in the world, it's causation of, 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 of yeah, thoughts, uh, <laughs> something, beliefs. Uh, uh, normative one, right? So you mean normative? Normative? Uh, no, or not, not normative per se, uh, just it's about, um, um, how the thing that happens in my head, mm -hmm. if, if I'm getting confronted with some new information, is mm -hmm. going to affect something else happening in my head. Uh -huh. And there yeah. are certain, if I'm a rational agent, or if, if I'm, uh, anyway, it's kind of, if, my, if my thinking is kind of structured, so, uh, there's yeah. going to be some causal principles that, um, that take me from one, mental state to another mental state uh, in view of this new information independent of whether anything of what I think is true or is in any way related to causes or to, to, to grounding relations or whatever um, like there's something the laws of the mental stuff that is happening mm -hmm. is seems to be kind of the thing that we want to understand better in such proposals. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I see. Yeah. Um, and that's a call causation on another completely different level. Uh, I agree, yeah. Uh, and, and, and I always wonder, like, are we really perfectly clear whether we are now talking about the event, mm -hmm. the draw, mm -hmm. or are we talking about the information we have about the draw and what that would uh, cause in our heads mm -hmm. rather than what the draw causes in the real world and what we think about that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To, do you have any like help there where I should see these these propositions? Are they like mental entities or mm -hmm. are they mm -hmm. I mean it's a very uh, like broad question. Yeah. But, uh, no, yeah, I yeah. No, I see. So yeah. So we have a causal order. Right and mental order, and they they you know, don't uh, they may not ma map each other. No, yeah, often they yeah. don't. Yeah, often, often they don't. Yeah. We, if we so, don't understand yeah. the cause, I mean, there might not be any cause in the world for exactly. You know, uh, exactly. So, uh, so where Bayesian networks are applied to uh, uh, artificial intelligence systems uh, uh, to model uncertain reasoning. Yeah, so um, so they assume this mental stuff, like me not mental, but this proposition somehow, somehow represents a real real causal order, right? But uh, I don't want to say the same, similar thing here in my case. So so that's why I, I want to focus like within the agent's perspective, what are what are what are immediately uh, epistemically uh, like what are direct epistemic linked to this proposition? What the agent considers to be direct epistemic. So, in, uh, when when I try to convey this with examples, 
I give examples which uh, I would say map real uh, causal structures in certain way, right? Because even like uh, I'm, I'm no expert in this, but it, like the causes of event doesn't sound to be correct. Like there are many many causes depending on like which uh, what, what we are really interested, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The causes of the thing, right? So uh, I would say that like uh, within the agent's mental state. Uh, what, is, what is directly explanatory prior to what? It may not map the causal structure. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, and when we apply like Bayesian systems to make an inference, for example, mm, that's also what we look like. We, we look at the structure of our knowledge. Mm -hmm. Right? That's what, like, when we have a Bayesian network consisting of like eight variables which has to uh, give prescription to uh, like someone who broke his hand in a certain way, like they might have an like expert knowledge system, like put certain uh, variables like how old is this person, what is structure like, and there are other variables as well, and get some kind of answer. Yeah, so that represents our state of knowledge about what's relevant for for this treatment and what's not. So this, yeah, I would, I would, uh, I would look at this from internalistic point of view, like structure of our knowledge. <laughs> okay. Is yeah, that's very helpful. Yeah. So uh, and, and when we talk about beliefs, I want it to be structure of our beliefs, mm -hmm. not the structure outside our heads. And because we are focusing on rational person, uh, normativity can help us to simplify certain things. So because this structure of belief should be rational. Yeah, we can assume certain kind of like not not all kind of, kind of connection would work in that way. Uh, so yeah, I would say this should be analysis of structure of our knowledge. Okay, good. Yeah. It brings me to a second question. Uh, I um, so if it's that kind of structure, it reminds me some of the things you said. Uh, uh, Remind me a lot of like sort of uh, web of beliefs or of uh, mm -hmm. intuitions, uh, I mean, web of belief. Um, maybe just also because that's a nice visual structure. Uh, um, but it could also be a way to to, to define a nice context uh, and to see to see that some sort of things you don't want to be relevant at all to 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 to, to this specific uh, mm -hmm. belief. Well, Part of the partition because um, I mean it's 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 uh, it is very different somewhere in the web of belief and, mm -hmm. and then if it's very like uh, central in the belief you don't want to revise it even if you get the reasons to revise it uh, mm -hmm. you won't rather put into doubt things that are more on the app so so I, it's like a very open question uh, how. How would you really, what do you think about the, the web of beliefs? Uh, would it be any anyway related to, to, to sort of structures you have in mind? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you might want maybe that uh, the, the things that your arrows um, come from are typically like more central, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Rely on more stable information mm -hmm. to come to a certain conclusion. Not always, of course. Mm -hmm. So, so do, do you see any relations with with with, with web of beliefs? Yeah. Uh, so connect, connection should be there because uh, network is a is a yeah. You can you can. Like uh, precisify uh, the uh, pioneer idea is a like huge Bayesian network, right? Did people do that? I I'm not sure, but uh, oh, yeah, it would be cool. Yeah, it would be cool. Yeah. Uh, well, ah, I I I just seen an article, uh, like preparing for this talk two days ago. So they had a new paper which uh, constructed Bayesian network of scientific theories. Uh, explaining fine and William things like how they interact with. So yeah, the, 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 uh, some people who do this in philosophy of science for sure. So um, so my thinking here will be that 
And at least when we think about belief, even if we think about credence, I don't think we should think about the web of belief uh, for the reasons I've given. Like, uh, like if we, we have this vast knowledge, we should be fragmented. So in a way, I would think about different webs of belief, which, which don't, uh, don't really uh, interact much in our everyday life at all. Uh, because the, the word much seems to be quite important here. Yeah. They, they don't interact typically because they're very far apart, but given that in the end we are living this, these lives where these things are important, in some way they will interact. I mean, mm -hmm. even just by us uh, have been confronted with both kind of contexts. Uh, mm -hmm. so, so I don't think wine would be... Uh, he wouldn't find that a reason to have multiple sets of beliefs, that's no. sets of webs of beliefs. He would say like, yeah, sure, certain parts of these webs are extremely unrelated, mm -hmm. but they are still related. So, yeah. Uh, because at least they share so uh, the same logic or something, uh, or uh, exactly, same mathematics yeah. or whatever. Uh, like for uh, like this model, you can, so there will be things like connecting many of distinct, very distinct propositions. Like very coarse things, like uh, uh, that, like uh, the Earth didn't just appear one second ago. Like we don't have this kind of explicit beliefs, but there will be still connection, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, my my argument will be very normative one. What I would say is that from the purpose of having rational beliefs, this huge integration of different webs into a coherent whole won't be won't have any purpose if we want to think like what what. What is the purpose of belief? The purpose of belief is to give us reliable reasoning within the relevant contexts. Mm. Uh, there, is, there is this extended unification, will be, but that's, yeah. So, uh, so the kind of approach that I have will be more uh, in tune, even if I haven't thought about this, will be more in tune with this fragmented mind. Thinking. This this goes into actually this goes in the direction of the of the one other kind of comment question that I had, so I will jump in. Um, half of what I know about epistemology I learned from a grad seminar with Bob Audi, and one thing that that he always pounded the table about was like, stop giving people so many occurrent beliefs. Like people don't have that many occurrent beliefs, really, right? Like. And this, I think, is a place where this could this this kind of locks in and could help. Like in some of these complicated cases where you're worried about its context exploding, and something I thought of when you were talking about that, your 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 skepticism about this about this argument is, I, sure, maybe I have. Well, actually, not maybe. I know that I do, um, because the mathematical case guarantees it. Um, I might have a disposition to believe a million. I sure as heck don't have a million occurring beliefs. Mm -hmm. um, my head's not fat enough to hold that many occurring beliefs, and so I think that plays right in. That plays right into this. That mm -hmm. that that if if you if you make that distinction and say, you know, look, we've got to be really careful about, you know, a lot of these worries seem to. Your proposal plays very nicely into this idea that like. I don't need to assume that people have that many occurrent beliefs if I can say, sure, I mean, I'm sure I, I have a disposition to believe lots of stuff. But, mm -hmm. like, like, I I didn't, you know, two seconds ago, I didn't really, I didn't have an occurrent belief about where my dog is. Like, I had a disposition, and I was thinking of an example. I had a disposition to have one. Now, probably, I have one because I've just been thinking about it. But, like, I didn't bother to think about it until just now. And I feel like that's, that's very normal, right? That's kind of how we work. And, and so I think your move to say, yeah, you know, these, these distant parts of the network, I mean, we can model them maybe, mm -hmm. but they don't pose a problem for us mm -hmm. precisely because they're, they're in, in, a, in a sense, they're not really there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and I will, will also want to add that even if they were there, but I fully agree that they're not there, <laughs> even if they were there, it won't pose a uh, problem because we have a way of uh, differentiating and favoring certain contexts over the others. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, if we are happy that like beliefs cannot be just uh, 
conjunctively closed over all of our career, right? Uh, we should all accept <laughs> this. <laughs> like, if, if, uh, like uh, the, uh, if we reject this kind of conjunction rule, so, uh, and we go to, uh, with partition sensitivity, then, uh, yeah, Dolan is right that we need some way of treating certain partitions uh, in a uh, in a more uh, important way rather than others. So I, I think this network, like of course, it, it, it's also nice to fix how, how uh, uh, like uh, people like Perl and others think about this. So there are certain networks, like think about different networks. We don't need to consider everything. Mm -hmm. like, uh, so so I, I think this is the most obvious move if you want to be this um, uh, this partition sensitive. So other move will be like always folly and say that no belief is just not close under conjunction. We have different beliefs. Sometimes we connect them, sometimes not. But I still want to know like why we connect certain beliefs and other not. Maybe this gives a nice picture why we connect other, some beliefs and others not. So yeah. So one is like psychological question or about the current beliefs, and which I fully accept. Another is like even if we have many current beliefs. Like, I have a current belief, like, somebody tells me, just consider this proposition whether or not it heads or not. Okay? But this shouldn't uh, come to this context of, like, uh, for somebody owning a Honda, <laughs> if I don't see a connection. Right? So, uh, it needs to be fleshed out more, but, uh, yeah, I'm yeah. thinking that this may be one way to meet Dolan's challenge, but it, it may not work at the end, but <laughs> uh, I'll, I don't know, I'll try. Um, is it is it very like um, a kind of problem that I could see mm -hmm. popping up as for such ways to model it? Um, but I'm not sure what this is the case. Uh, uh, but that it could be very representation sensitive, like um, if you consider slightly different like different uh, propositions in your in your deck the, the kind of context would, would, would be, be described differently and you'll get a different result uh, mm -hmm. um, do you think that will be the case yeah I think that will be the um, case. and do, would you find that a problem yeah I, I, I think that will be the case and this is a potential problem that's why I think we need some kind of notion of, like, weaker notion of belief. Like, believing means that there is some appropriate context. So, this, and this is not arbitrary, because in this context, reasoning will be reliable, so it has some use, okay? Maybe if there are other representations of situation in which belief is no longer rational, that's not ideal, but I, I wouldn't be very upset about this, because we still have some idea of uh, uh, belief which is not as partition sensitive as like it is because we have some idea of why we believe this because there is a special partition. But I would uh, I would expect that I don't get very nice story in which there is only one very nice <laughs> network. <laughs> and which I, is fair, you know, yeah, I guess. Uh, yeah, I don't expect that. Yeah, yes. uh, yeah, I would, I would, um, uh, I would. Yeah, so this kind of case is going to be easily made. Even even this needs justification. This. Uh, like why don't consider non-descendants more justifications that I give But there can be more parents considered, etc. But uh, because I have a, uh, like uh, there is an answer to this, uh, in principle answer is, if there is a well-structured network in which belief is useful, it means that you have belief. Maybe there are other contexts in which the same belief is not useful, but still there is some 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 type of belief that you have. So uh, out uh, so I haven't thought much about this, but maybe it gives an idea to differentiate differentiate belief, which goes beyond uh, the probabilities, and say that like I yes I believe this stronger because it can be embedded in more and more like wider and wider webs of belief. And some, some propositions may have high probability, but it's not embeddable. Mm -hmm. I think lottery is like this. It's not embeddable in a, in a context. Uh, for the reasons that it's not related to any other proposition except other lotteries. 
Okay. Uh, and the issue out there also, which I have not thought about, is, is the role of belief in, in practical decision making. Because in practical decision making, I can conjoin very different propositions together. So this this proposal only uh, looks at reasoning, like truth-oriented reasoning. But in practical reasoning, I can envisage possibility, which I also consider like whether or not uh, coin landed heads or tails and Honda thing. I don't know for my uh, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, so uh, to go back to you, also, yeah, I, I, I don't expect there to be very nice uh, formal picture, so it, it will be messy. But I will be happy to say that even if there is like some set of partition in which uh, this belief is stable and useful, then you believe it. You, and uh, if it's not embedded in all relevant contexts, it means that it's, it's only weakly believed. But I, I need to figure this out. So, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, but yeah, the so stronger sense of belief will be this, which will be embedded in all different relevant contexts. But I'm not sure whether or not we have such a belief, <laughs> which will be so stable. Then, so, uh, if we need to consider a lot of propositions, so I would say just we, we belief is no longer useful. We need probability. So then, uh, for example, Jeffrey's point will be uh, relevant. So that belief is not useful in very s serious, uh, exact thinking because of error probabilities. And we need Bayesian credences or comparative probabilities. So, so I think belief is a humble, humble. He has a humble place belief, but, but yeah, we shouldn't expect it to be so stable and useful. Yeah. But uh, this is very rough, so I, I need to sit down and uh, think more about this. So this is my initial initial idea about this. Okay. Yeah. Uh, cool. Questions? Good. We're pretty much at time, too. Yeah. So yeah. Thanks, Thanks again. So much. Thank you.